Hello and welcome to this section of the Circuit Analysis Tutor where we are continuing to work with the mesh current method uh, specifically dealing with dependent sources in the circuit. When we have a dependent source in a circuit where we're using the mesh current method. So here we have a circuit here which uh, really is not that difficult to deal with. We have a 135 volt source, a resistor network, and then we have a dependent voltage source on the other side of the circuit. The voltage on the terminals of this guy is 10 times uh, current that we're calling I5, just like before. This time I5 is defined to be flowing this direction through the 3 ohm resistor right there. So whatever the value of this current is, is going to dictate the value of this voltage source. And the question that we're asked is, what is the power dissipated in the 20 ohm resistor, which is the resistor bordering these two meshes here? So we're using the mesh current, so it's the same thing as always. Basically, we define our meshes, we write our mesh currents down in the circuit, and then we write our mesh equations down for each mesh. So we should have three of them because there's three meshes here, okay? And then what you're going to find is that since you have a dependent source here, you're going to naturally introduce another variable, this one being I sub phi, and then you're going to need to, to use a constraint equation to uh, basically uh, round out your system and give yourself enough equations. So let's go ahead and take it one step at a time. So let's define, it doesn't really matter, but let's define this one as I sub A. And let's define this one on the top as I sub B. And let's define this one here as I sub C. So don't forget our end game. What we're really going to be doing is finding the power dissipated through this resistor. So there's a couple ways to do it, but basically what we really want to do is know what is the real current flowing through this resistor, and then we can use I squared R, um, I squared times 20, to find out what is the power actually being dissipated there. But in order to find the current through here, we're going to solve our mesh current equations to find the currents everywhere in the circuit, and then we'll easily be able to, to tackle that. So let's go in and deal with mesh A first. This is mesh A, and we're going to walk around clockwise like this. When we go through the 135 volt source, we're traveling from negative to positive. So that's going to give us a negative in our equations, 135 volts. We're summing up the voltages as we go around this mesh. Now when we get to the 3 ohm resistor, see this is a great example of when students can get confused. Because you're walking through the 3 ohm resistor, you're trying to write your mesh equations, but then you see right away that you have I phi defined as moving this way. You really need to ignore everything other than what you're doing in the circuit. They're frequently going to give you problems where you know, you'll have a current defined and given to you. This I5 is given to you in the problem as going a certain way. And some students, they'll say, well, that current's going this way, so I've got to change my mesh current equation around and, and all this. No, 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 no. That stuff is defined and locked down. It may turn out that I5 may actually be going the other way. We just don't know. You ignore this. This label on this drawing has nothing to do with what we're doing now. Your job is to use the mesh currents that you've defined and you walk around and you write your equations in terms of the mesh currents that you have defined. So ignore this I5 for now. It's not even relevant until we start talking about this source over here. Okay? So we're going to assume that the, volt, the actual current through this 3 ohm resistor in this mesh here is actually going this way, which means it would have to be IA minus IB, which is fighting it. So it's going to be IA minus IB, which would be fighting it, times 3 ohms. So it's I times R. The current is this guy, defined as IA minus IB, to be going this way, times R. Right? And because we define it this way, we're able to put a plus in our equation.